GPU sales numbers are looking pretty atrocious. God of War Ragnarok numbers, however, ho, 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 coming in hot. And AMD gonna be raising their prices by 25%. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find out on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And to everybody in the United States, happy Thanksgiving to everybody in the rest of the world. Thursday. Let's talk about the GPU sales decline being reported by John Petty Research, who indicates that this is the largest sales decline since the 2009 recession. So in just over 13 years, and it does appear like things have fallen quite a bit, indicating that year to year total GPU shipments have declined 25%. Desktop GPUs are down 15% and notebooks are down 30%. Then when looking at market share between the big three, Intel, AMD, and Nvidia, it does look like AMD has has lost roughly 6% market share in the last year and 8% in the last quarter. Nvidia has lost about 2% in the last quarter and 4% in the last year. And Intel has gained about 10% in the last year. And that is likely due to the fact that discrete sales are down. And these numbers are including the integrated GPUs that are included with every Intel processor that's not an F series. So take these numbers with a grain of salt. It's not 100% clear that this is how the market shakes up, but it does look like Nvidia and AMD are aren't exactly selling hand over fist anymore. Additionally, the GPU attach rates down 6% in the last quarter. The overall PC CPU market's down 6% in the last quarter and 18.6% in the last year. And desktop GPU add-in boards are down 33.5% from the last quarter. So regardless of how you look at it, it does look like GPUs are just not selling. And one would hope that would mean that prices are likely to drop in order to incentivize more sales as the market is progressing forward, especially considering that Q3 is a time where numbers start to tick up from Q2, but that is not what happened this quarter. In fact, it was down 10%, which is actually supposed to be a growth rate of 5.3% from Q2. It does not look good. So you would hope that there's some shakeup in the market for that reason. However, John Petty points out that generally the feeling is that Q4 shipments will be down, but average sale prices will be up, supply will be fine, and everyone will have a happy holiday. So it looks like there's gonna be enough GPUs to go around, but that doesn't mean that prices are going to come down in order to make sure that the percentages are gonna go up. I think AMD and Nvidia both know that the gamer market is a little bit tapped and that their market for selling to miners is gone, and so they just have to eat these percentage declines because most people are not going to be going out and buying six graphics cards and attaching them to a single CPU because they're no longer gonna be mining. Sad that this means that prices will go up. You would hope that it would mean prices would go down, but that doesn't seem to be the case but I really hope that it would be. Hopefully with the fact that the RTX 4080 isn't selling, Nvidia might drop the price. That's what I really would like to see, but I'm a fool. And you'd be a fool not to consider today's video sponsor. My friends, today's video is sponsored by Altel. They believe that green energy powers the future and they have a home charger that I think you should check out at the link in the video description. This is the Altel Maxi Charger, smart EV charger for your house. The one that they specifically sent over to me is the one that connects via a NEMA 1450 plug, and this honestly is a new way of approaching home vehicle charging. And part of this is thanks to Autel being a global company focused on exploring the sustainable development of better people, vehicles, technology, and new energy. In the world's technology market, Autel has a global presence and is committed to bringing valuable, reliable, and smart products to clients. And this maxi charger hits all of those boxes. Firstly, it enables high-speed charging for your electric vehicle. The home charger I have goes up to 40 amps, which can provide up to 10 kilowatts of energy, which means I can charge an EV up to full and significantly faster time than with just a regular 120 volt outlet. It's so simple to come home, plug in the vehicle overnight, and then I'm ready to go with nearly a full battery the next morning. I don't charge it to full because that's a bad idea for the battery's longevity, but you can get a very quick charge out of this. And then as you would want in a home charger, it is extremely weather resistant. It has IP65 rating and is capable of working in temperatures of minus 40 degrees Celsius, as well as up to 50 55 degrees Celsius. So it's capable of working in cold as well as in heat. And then the smart features. This is what I really enjoy. It connects to the Autel app, which gives you real time notifications and reporting of the charging status of your vehicle so that you can make sure everything's working the way that you want it to. And the actual charger has LED indicators for power, internet, charging, Bluetooth connectivity, as well as RFID, which is one of the cool features of this Autel because you can do the remote control via the app 
or the RFID, scanning your smartwatch using an RFID card, you can activate it. You can also have it so that it automatically starts charging when you plug it in. But one of the reasons why you might not wanna do that is because Autel allows you to connect it to a network that allows you to sell your charger to people who might need to use it. You can either charge them for the electricity or the time that they're using the charger. And the app in RFID starting allows you to actually enable that feature where you can actually share your electric charger with a network of people who might otherwise need it. So it's good for home charging, but then it's also good for either helping people out and making sure that they just recoup the cost of your electricity, or in case you wanna charge people for using your EV charger at your place of business, in case they're not a client or you're one of your employees, you can set it up so that you can generate revenue from your EV charger. But also through the app, you can do a whole host of things. Start and stop charging, reserve charging, check the charging amount, the charging time. You can set your electricity costs to see how much it's actually cost you. And you can also upgrade the firmware of your charger, which if you're worried about unscheduled maintenance, the app allows you to actually schedule it for yourself so that everything's done appropriately into your schedule, all being done over the air so that you don't have to worry about any of that. But it also has intelligent energy management like adaptive load management, which helps to prevent overcurrent trips, reduce electricity bills, and make sure that you're not drawing too much electricity at one time, especially if you are charging your EV. And in case you have variable rates on your electricity, depending on what time of day you're using it, the adaptive load management can help save you money in that regard where you're actually not charging during peak electricity costs. The Altel Maxi Home Smart EV Charger has a lot of great features that you should definitely check out at the link in the video description. Currently, they're running a sale where it's $100 off than it otherwise would be. You can set it up at your home. You could even set it up at your business in case you want to generate some revenue. But check it out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to Autel for sponsoring today's video. You know what charges me up though? Crypto stonks, Bitcoin. Up a little bit, sixteen and a half thousand dollars, up two point five percent. Ethereum up four point two percent to be at eleven seventy two, and Dogecoin up three point seven six percent to be at eight point one cents. And Reese, give us the pre Black Friday Black Friday deals here on Thanksgiving Thursday, which to you in South Africa is just stage five load shedding day. Yo, welcome back to UFTD as we bring the hottest tech deals out on the internet. We're one day away from Black Friday, so technically today is your last day to pick up something before the hype. Just like this 27 inch 4K LG monitor that I picked up yesterday. You can probably see it in the corner there. I haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna put this. It's big, it's big, it's much bigger than what I had. So if that's your game plan, I can get you started off with a couple of deals like this MSI MPG Z690 Edge Wi-Fi gaming motherboard. This LGA 1700 socket for 12th gen Intel supports both DDR5 and PCI Express 5. And you can pick it up for only $249.99, which is 24% off. And the perfect thing to pair with it is this Intel Core i7-12700K, which is currently going for only $334 with the additional promo code for $115.99 off. And to keep that cool, you can pick up the Corsair i QH170i Elite. This AIO CPU liquid cooler comes with a built-in LCD display and is currently going for $259.99. And then we have the Cooler Master V650 Gold V2. The 650 watt 80 plus gold platinum fully modular power supply is currently going for $80.90 which is $54.09 off. On the multimedia side of things we've got the Hisense A4G. Their 40 inch 1080p smart TV going for only $99.99 which is $150 off. I am seriously jealous of the TV prices there in America. But on the higher end of things we have the LG A2, a 48 inch 4K OLED smart TV going for $569.99 which is a whopping $730 off. But then if you already have a dumb TV and you want to make it into a smart TV you can grab a Roku streaming stick 4K for $24.99 which is half off. And then lastly for my South African peeps, if you have not played the 2018 God of War do yourself a favor and go to Incredible Connection because you can pick up the PS4 version for only 19 Rand which is literally just over a dollar. And like always you can find the links to these in the video description and I'll catch you tomorrow tomorrow for Black Friday, but until then, cheers. Thanks, Reese. Maybe I could use some of those UFD deals to play a Netflix AAA PC game, which is what is now going to be in the works, according to some hiring posts that they're making, as well as some details in those job listings, including the fact that they want to make a brand new AAA PC game, which is going to be the like of a live service game like Destiny 2. However, they don't have to worry about monetization because Netflix will just attach it to their actual revenue that they already have, and they don't necessarily need to add in all of those loot gimmicks, which honestly sounds good. Like, I would like to see this almost. Additionally, there's some details that they might also be working on a third person action RPG, a la God of War, a la The Witcher 3. 
I would love to see. All of this sounds good. Netflix, I mean, they've only been making mobile games for the last little bit attached to the Netflix subscription and with that only on Android, but this could potentially be a turnaround for the entire Netflix market where not only did they revolutionize the streaming market on the internet for movies, they might be able to turn it around for video games too. I'm at least intrigued, which is where my mind's at with the Witcher 3 next gen upgrade, which got a gameplay reveal yesterday. They showed off a whole lot of details, including the ray trace global illumination, the fact that it'll have FSR2 and DLSS, a photo mode, new ultra plus graphics modes. It's going to run at 60 FPS on consoles unless you want ray tracing, and then it's going to be 30 FPS. There's going to be new camera perspectives, reworked textures and foliage, cross progression between consoles and PC, quality of life improvements, including things changed on the mini map. It does seem to be like a pretty decent overhaul. And again, it's going to be free for whoever actually owns The Witcher on any platform of the next gen variety. So I'm honestly really happy with CD Projekt read on this they could have just not done anything for this game it came out in 2015 they could have just let it lie and continue to work on their next gen projects but no they're actually really trying to make something that is going to do right by the fans it does still kind of look like it came out in 2015 in the update trailer but regardless i know what i'm going to be playing on december 14th and what i've been playing for the last little bit but can't anymore because i 100 percent completed is god of war ragnarok which sony just came out with some sales details on this indicating that is the fastest selling first party launch for Sony ever. And it sold 5.1 million copies through its debut week, which is just crazy. It's the God of War franchise record sold the most in that first week. It is a crazy selling game. Honestly, I loved nearly every second of it. I wouldn't say that it was perfect, but it is my favorite game that I've ever played. There's tweaks and improvements I would have liked to see, but the story and everything that they did with it just really hit home. I am very, very satisfied with Ragnarok. I've read a lot of forum posts about reasons why people disagree with it, and I disagree with them heavily. I have my own thoughts and opinions, but I'm not gonna spoil it for anybody who's still looking to play it. It only came out within the last couple of weeks, and it's a long game, so I'm not gonna go through the effort of talking about the details, but I am just very thankful for this. The last two games in this franchise, it's done a lot for me. I really enjoyed it. And what's done a lot for me, some graphics cards, Hall of Fame graphics cards from Galax, and they're just announcing their 3060 Ti version, which is gonna be the Hoff Pro design with a triple fan design. Look at this bad boy, Hall of Fame on a 3060 Ti. The last time they did something like that was with the GTX 1060, like a mid-tier Hall of Fame, not something that they typically have been doing in the latest generations. They did also have a 970 Hall of Fame, and you can see your young boy, Right here with the 970, 980, and 980 Ti Hall of Fames all right there, and a nosebleed. This only has 433 views. It's a little bit of a crying shame that it performs so. This came out seven years ago, today, November 24th. What? It's a Thanksgiving miracle. This video came out seven years ago today. Can we get it up to 500 views? Will 67 of you go and watch this nosebleed video? It's poor quality, it's bad. We've gotten a lot better at making videos since then but please do it for me. I'd love to see that. And you won't love to see AMD raising their prices, but don't worry, calm down. It's not about you, okay? They're raising their prices on their Xilinx FPGAs. This is actually gonna be happening sometime starting in 2023, according to a letter that they sent out to the people who purchase their FPGA products. And these price increases are gonna be up to 25% on some of these FPGA products. This does seem to be an industry-wide thing that's happening. Intel also has raised their prices on their FPGAs over the last year and so it does appear to be like something that's an economic market pressure that's happening. AMD is not immune to it, but you don't have to worry. It's not trickling on down to the CPUs. Those are still on sale if you wanna use our affiliate links for them. If you're buying stuff this Black Friday, you wanna pick up a Ryzen processor, it'd be ever so grateful if you used our sales link down below. I'll see you back here for more hot news tomorrow, my friends. Uh, chippy cheerio, adios.